I will just give you a very short introduction to what Claring is. Uh, I'm Francesca Frontini from the Claring Board of Directors. And uh, uh, so there are probably some newbies to Claring here. So this will be useful for them. Uh, here we are. So Claring uh, stands for Common Language Resources and Technology Infrastructures. This is an ERIC. So it is a um, European uh, Resource Infrastructure Consortium, a legal entity since 2012. And it is also recognized as a landmark, so an established infrastructure. It, its aim is to provide easy and sustainable access for scholars in the humanities and social sciences, but also beyond, to digital language data in written, spoken, and multimodal form, and advanced tools to discover, explore, exploit, annotate, analyze, or combine them wherever they are located. This is also done by a system of single sign-on, it also serves as an ecosystem for knowledge sharing. And I think that uh, uh, what we are here for today is part of the knowledge sharing infrastructure of Clarin. And it is also an integral part of the European Open Science Cloud to which uh, it already provides uh, services. This is uh, Clarin today. It is a distributed infrastructure of uh, 70 uh, data and knowledge centers. Uh, distributed in over 22 uh, member countries and uh, uh, three observers. So at the core of the technical infrastructure of Clarin is this network of data centers, which uh, provide uh, an ecosystem for fair language resources. So these the language resources in Clarin are hosted in uh, the various centers, but they uh, can be discovered and used also uh, centrally, so without knowing where they are located or stored, thanks to uh, first and foremost, uh, the virtual language observatory, uh, where all the metadata from the various centers are harvested and made searchable. And then in the language resources switchboard, which allows uh, to discover web services that can be used to analyze uh, the language data and uh, um, which are also made available by the various centers. Clarin is also a knowledge infrastructure. So um, first and foremost, uh, uh, this is uh, um, uh, thanks to a, a large network of knowledge centers, which uh, do not offer uh, data, but rather uh, competencies, knowledge. So uh, they uh, can be addressed uh, over topics of their specific competence by researchers from the whole Clarin network. Uh, Clarin also uh, hosts and uh, um, organizes together with Daria Eric, the Digital Humanities Course, course Registry, where uh, students and lecturers from, uh, from Europe can discover programs and courses in digital humanities from uh, various European countries. The Tour de Clarin and uh, more recently the impact stories are also useful uh, source of information about uh, uh, what the various uh, national consortia and centers uh, uh, offer in terms of resources and services, but also on the impact uh, that uh, their activities have uh, um, on, uh, the research, uh, on uh, researchers' uh, activities and on uh, their uh, results. Teaching with Clarin is a new initiative. I will say something a little bit uh, more in detail uh, in the next slide. Uh, and video lectures also provide useful materials uh, for teachers and lecturers. And then there are a number of support uh, initiatives, uh, including initiatives to support for uh, European projects. So um, as I said, uh, this new initiative, Teaching with Clarin, is somewhat linked uh, to what we are here uh, for today. It was uh, launched uh, also, uh, and thanks to the, uh, the work of Juliana van der Leck, who is our training officer. And it now, uh, this section of the Clarin infrastructure now contain, uh, contains uh, a first selection uh, of uh, course materials that were made available by uh, researchers and uh, lecturers from the Clarin infrastructure. But uh, we plan to extend this. And uh, we also uh, plan to have a yearly teach, uh, Teaching with Clarin Award to uh, kind of recognize the effort of uh, uh, our uh, researchers and lecturers in, uh, in this area. Um, I would like to mention the Clarin resource families. Uh, and in this, I should acknowledge this is really uh, Daria Fischer's uh, uh, creation. And uh, the Clarin resource families are friendly, user friendly overviews. Uh, per data type of the available language resources in the Clarin infrastructure. 
<clears throat> they contain 12, 12 corporate families, five families of lexical resources, and four, five, four tool families. And uh, they provide information about uh, meta, with the most important metadata, brief description, and links to download and concordances. They are very useful for those who want to um, kind of have a general overview of a certain uh, uh, type of resources, uh, be it uh, digital humanists, social scientists, or human language technologists, and in particular uh, for those who are trying to do comparative research. But we believe that they can also be a very useful uh, teaching material. So uh, I think that's all for me now. <clears throat>